Well, hello, this is Keith King. This is episode number 14. It is 5.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Ohio, USA. September 15, 2021, 73 degrees and mostly cloudy. Middle of September. In past podcasts, I have briefly mentioned about us not being alone on planet Earth. Other races, aliens, ETs, or connections with UFOs being off-world or governments around planet Earth. So just wanted to get into a little more detail about some of these universal races. Galactic Federation members and reptilians. You've probably heard about reptilians. So do you believe in reptilians? A lot of people bring up about some of the world's elite being reptilian bloodline or ancient bloodline or the British royal family. I'm not sure if you ever heard of David Icke, but he's talked a lot about the reptilians or the lizards or lizzies. So um, check it out. Do your own research. But uh, I just wanted to say that uh, recently I had also mentioned in a previous podcast about a really unbelievable military whistleblower who was talking about a variety of subjects, but he had was discussing about who is in command, who's in command of the military, who's in command of the United States or planet Earth. He claims you will never see the person on TV. But he says the planet is not run by people who you think. And that alien, non-humans, or human, is running the planet. You've heard of the Nephilim, or the giants from the Bible and in Genesis, offsprings of the angels, the fallen angels, mating with the females on earth. Well, there's been giants, there's been skulls from giant race that have been found around the planet, different continents. Um, a paleontologist received a skull from a rock from a troop. The DNA wasn't human. It was from a Nephilim skull in a rock in Asia, North America, Colorado, USA, in a cave there was a big skull. The DOD, Department of Defense, It is told they run the Smithsonian Institute, or Smithsonian Museum. But they take away any evidence that God is real, because it takes away their power. And um, you could find pictures of these skulls, if you just do some research, and the the bones, some of these are, you know, up to 26 feet tall uh, beings, and... uh, but, you know, there's been a variety of different types of UFOs that have been witnessed. Cigar, Tylenol looking, diamond shapes. And, uh, you know, they've been witnessed all over. I've mentioned the Dulce base in the past about an underground military base in New Mexico where they do human and alien experimenting. The alien and UFOs, they have... Uh, stopped nuclear warheads in the Sherman Forest in Europe and in the USA. And um, so uh, Galactic Federation members, they um, consist of a lot of different races called the Andromedians, the Arcturians, the Bellatricians, the Centurions, the Formohadans, the Mentakans, the Pegasians, the Prokayanas, and the Tau Cetians. And I'm not sure about the pronunciation. You have to forgive me on, on that. But um, some of these look like humans. Some of them look like insects. Some of them look like rep, uh, reptilians and other things. A lot of people prefer the greys. They say most of the uh, abductions on Earth have been from the greys. It's been said that the Greys had an agreement with the U.S. government, military, 
over decades to abduct for, in return, uh, technology. But they had, at some point, stopped the abductions. The tall blondes are uh, referred to at times are, are the Nordics, the Draconians, and like I said, the Reptilians. So some of this information, it, it lists the member name, the location, where they're from, the distance from Earth, the life form type of what they look like, um, special traits and abilities, how much sleep they need, what language they speak, their mothership, and their other craft. So it gives a description. For example, the Andromedian star nations are approximately 3.5 million years ago, distance from Earth 150 to over 4,000 light years away. Humanoid life form type. Physical appearance, like Earth humans. Galactic Federation do wear jumpsuits. Uh, two basic Earth types is Caucasian, Nordic type, blonde hair, blue eyes, Mediterranean type. The second type is Oriental, dark hair, dark Asian eyes, different shades of skin color and such. So they say they only need to sleep two hours a day. They speak uh, like a dialect of uh, Spanish or Italian. The mother ship is a sombrero-shaped scout ship. Some are 50 to 65 feet across, lens-shaped, um, also uh, half a mile long. The Arcturians, uh, 3.75 million years ago, from the uh, star Arcturus and the constellation of Boots, 36 light years away from Earth. A horse-like sentient being. Uh, the mothership, uh, they vary from bell-shaped scout ship, 40 to 75 feet in diameter, to a mothership 14 miles in length. Imagine that. But the, it's been said there, it'll blow you away if you believe it to be true or not. And how do you know? But some of them could be... Uh, much bigger than that. I mean, I'll, I'll read some of that in a little bit, but I mean, they get, I mean, some I think are like 400 miles long or a thousand miles long. Can you imagine that? But I guess you're talking technology way beyond us if there's been species that have been around for millions of years and not like they say on Earth where we've been around for 4,000 or 10,000 years. Um, so, uh, the Bellatricians are reptilians. They're 112.5 light years away from Earth. They resemble those of Earth's reptiles, like a crocodile. Their mothership uh, varies uh, from 100 feet to 400 feet in length. And, uh, well, their scout, their scout craft look like uh, dewdrops or beetles, and they go 100 to uh, 400 feet in length. The motherships range from 1 to 400 miles. The centurions are reptilians and humans. Their distance from Earth, 4.3 to over 1,000 light years. Life form is a humanoid and reptoid species. Their humanoid centurion closely resemble humans on Earth. The reptoid centurion is a lizard-like, muscular body. Uh, they only need to sleep two to four hours a day. Their language is quite uh, like German. Um, the, uh, uh, one of the command ships is like a cigar, approximately 200 feet in length. The Formalians are Pleiadians. Some, and past some of my Facebook friends, uh, they say that they are, their soul has been from the Pleiadian star system, that they are like a human and reptoid, um, from, uh, the Pleiadian star system, and they are from the constellation Aquarius, 23 light years from Earth. Life form type is a, they have a human rebel group from the Pleiades, uh, colonized uh, there 250,000 years ago. The second is a dinoid reptoid from uh, Orion, and the, the solar system uh, settled there 200,000 years ago. And um, 
So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Their physical appearance is a Nordic type of ET. Blonde, hair, blue eyes. Uh, um, so, um, their special traits and abilities, they, uh, they like Andromedia, uh, two million light years away from our galaxy. Uh, the language, human language, or dinoid reptoid language. Their scout ships are ovoid, like a water drop about to fall from a tap. Their mother ships are multi-layered cigars, and they're from two miles to 1,200 miles across. The dinoid reptoid scout ships are shaped like huge beetles, approximately 100 feet. Uh, mother ships are from eight to 900 miles across. The Metakins are like reptilians. They're 233 light years from Earth. They uh, resemble frogs and toads of Earth. And, um, of course, they're um, mushroom-like in parents, motherships, and crafts resemble their large spaceship at the end of the movie, Close Encounters. And they can get up to 100 to 1,000 miles across. The larger ones are very self-sufficient and are usually kept only in deep space. The Pegasians are human-like, and they're 200 to 3,000 light years from Earth. They're Syrian human in height and appearance. Uh, they have a physical appearance of a Sirius B humanoid from the Lyra constellation. They're, uh, the beings are from Pegasus. They're known for their prowess as innovators, scientists, and diplomats. The lang uh, language is uh, harmonic sounding. Mo uh, three types of ships are operating in or near Earth. Some of them are up to 1,300 feet in length. The Preconians are human and reptoid. They colonize Sirius B, location above the star Sirius in the evening sky. Distance from Earth, 11.4 light years from Earth. Two types of Senian beings, the Lyrian Syrian humanoid, and this, uh, uh, like on Sirius B, they're either blue or white skinned and are fully conscious. And, um, so their physical appearance is typical of the Lyrian Syrian, uh, look like typical Earth humans, and, so the amount of uh, sleep that they need is only one to two hours a day. The uh, humanoids, uh, the am amph amphiboid reptoids need about three to four hours of sleep. <clears throat> They're, they have a beetle-like ship uh, up to uh, 45 to 200 feet across. Their deep space motherships are shaped like snowflakes or enormous jellyfish and are from 100 to 4,000 miles long. Imagine that. That's a 1,000 miles longer than the Atlantic to the Pacific of the USA. The Tau Sessions are human-like. They're closest star to Earth in constellation of Cetus, the whale. They're a humanoid, and um, they're... They have some, designed some of the most advanced ships in the Galactic Federation's exploration fleets. They are considered some of the best pilots and navigators in the galaxy. A mo average amount of sleep, only one to two hours a day. Language is like German or Arabic. They have a diamond, scouts are huge, diamond shaped plasma craft, 200 to 250 feet long. The mother ships are multi-layered uh, uh, blood cells in stacks of 20 to 50 cells and vary from 4 miles to 44 miles in diameter. So um, a lot of different galactic civilizations. They say people in the USA trace back to Babylon and they show all the different types of people over history where they were connected to either Human civilization, Atlantis, or reptilian civilization, Lemuria. Lemuria is underground, hollow earth. The Lemurian civilization was in the Pacific. 
The Atlanteans, that was the Atlanta civilization and the Atlantic Ocean. But it's been known, uh, the royal families, rulers of the earth, there's always been told in the Illuminati structure, secret societies, 13 uh, uh, families that are in the power. One of them is the Rockefellers, one of them is the Rothschilds, and it goes on. Uh, some of the other names you'd be familiar with. But universal races um, on uh, throughout, um, they have uh, the known as the bird people, the carrions, or the bird people, or the parent race of the reptilians. There are the felines, the lion people, the parent race of the humans. They have... That's pretty wild when you look at the pictures. They say they look like, and they're, so they, they you know, they, they face looking like a cat or a lion, but, um, they, they're supposed to be 12 to 16 feet tall. And, uh, the, the humans, we are the Nibirians from the Pleiadian star system. The reptilians, the dragon, the snake, and lizard people, the royal line of reptilians are the draconians, the winged dragons, the reptiles, winged serpents, snakes, lizards, lizzies. Uh, so, uh, also, um, the reptilians, uh, like I said, David Icke has spoke a lot about them. He's done a lot of research on them. Linda Moulton Howe is another. But the creatures are reptilian features are webbed claw-like hands, large golden eyes with vertical slit pupils, scaly greenish brown skin. Now researchers, uh, uh, there's a variety of entities involved in the alien abduction scenario, including the familiar grays, tall human-like blondes, Nordics, the reptilians, the Anunnaki, the hybrids, half human and half alien. Now if you haven't ever watched any programs or done any research, on MUFON, you should check that out. That's the Mutual UFO Network. It's one of the largest and most credible organizations dedicated to the scientific study of UFOs and abductions. Okay? So check that out. Um, the grays, whether the beings reported by abductees are grays, blondes, or reptilians, or any other variety, the scenario of the abduction phenomena is fairly consistent among the thousands of cases studied thus far. In addition to having numerous medical procedures performed on them, abductees also report receiving information in the form of symbols or images, the meaning of which is often unclear, but much of it has to do with future Earth disasters. The beings sometimes refer to themselves as the watchers, custodians, or guardians of mankind and all living things on Earth. And they say they are preparing for the time in the near future when global changes, isn't that the big talk every day now, will dramatically affect life on our planet. In some cases, they have indicated that they come from various parts of the universe, including other galaxies, or from a very distant place. Now, I'd also have to ask, have you ever dreamed of being somewhere where you thought it wasn't planet Earth? or maybe in another galaxy or another planet or a moon or on a, a some kind of a ship or craft. That's, uh, that'd be interesting to know. Leave a comment. Leave a comment for me. Um, so, you know, you get into the whole Dead, Street, Dead Sea Scrolls evidence, biblical evidence with the Old Testament about UFOs or other races. It's there. Some of the books that were left out of the Bible, like especially the books of Enoch, Go back to Genesis. They talk about, um, you know, again, the giant race, the uh, Nephilim. Uh, so, you know, just uh, talk with other people about this or do some research. Or maybe you have some things to share about this topic. Maybe you just think it's all BS or maybe you think it's real. Maybe you think you, you have... A memory of a past life somewhere on Earth or somewhere else. I don't know. But uh, what makes the, the Old Testament even more intriguing is the fact that 
little known character named Amram is quite an important personage. Amram, it turns out, was the father of one of the most famous contactees in history, the man who delivered the Jews from slavery in Egypt. This person, of course, none other than Moses. Now, some pictures depict Moses actually having horns. You know, and of course, a lot of people wore crowns. A lot of people in history wore hats. And so if they had horns or some other kind of race, they were hidden with a crown or a hat or a towel, a rag, some kind of material. So um, extraterrestrial reptile gods uh, is very, very interesting to me. I mean, I always was. I mean, for many, many years. It was a very interesting topic. But, um, so, you know, we have, if you believe we have our reptilian ancestors or we have reptilian, uh, people that are in power on the earth, um, do some research on that. And, uh, so, you know, some people talk about the reptile part of the brain. So they say, you know, their human brain has a, uh, uh, reptilian, uh, complex to it. So, um, the bodies of Adam, Adam and Eve were overlaid with a horny skin that was as bright as daylight, like a luminescent garment. And uh, so, you know, those tantalizing clues from the dim past seem to give at least some support for the idea that today's UFO occupants, reptilian or otherwise, are exactly who they say they are, the ancient guardians of humankind. If that is so, then the theory that UFOs are piloted by aliens from other planets must be carefully carefully reevaluated. So it's a mystery, right? But a lot of history is hidden. It's with hidden in gov within governments. It's hidden within military, and it's hidden within the Vatican. In the basement of the Vatican, there are like many miles worth of documents and books. A library, the Vatican Library. You've heard of the Vatican Library, right? been movies that have discussed it a little bit. So it's uh, hidden information in the Vatican. But um, Christine Fitzgerald, and it's funny that name because I have Fitzgeralds in my family, and Fitzgeralds, uh, a couple of them are in the past uh, lineage, were also known as Sirs. Well, you hear people today being called Sir, and Sir actually refers to serpent. But Christine Fitzgerald was best friend of Diana, Princess Diana, and a personal confidant. And she, uh, they talked about uh, the royal family being reptilians, reptilian humanoid. And so Christine Fitzgerald, the confidant of Diana, Princess of Wales, she claims Diana told her that the royal family were reptilian aliens and that they could shapeshift. So that's what I was going into is I read a, an ancestral line of mine, Fitzgerald's, one of them being a, shapeshifter. David Icke and others have claimed that President George W. Bush and his family are part of the same bloodline. And so uh, Christine Fitzgerald claimed uh, that the royal family were reptilian aliens and uh, they could shapeshift, right? So, um, and uh, like I said, that and uh, Bush. So uh, the Council on Human Reptilian Allegiance uh, that was highly publicized about this topic. And, um, so, you know, you got a lot of, you got a hybrid race with mixed blood, sort, sorted ancient gods and Sumerian texts and Dead Sea Scrolls. And it's, it's just crazy, right? So, uh, it's pretty interesting. David Icke claims that people see reptilian humanoids and that reptilian species are the force behind a worldwide conspiracy directed at manipulation and control of humanity. According to Ike, one type of reptilian entity that people see during alleged encounters resembles dinosauroids. Ike theorizes that the reptilians came here from the constellation Draco. So, um, that's pretty wild. And then Kathy O'Brien, who claims to be a victim of CIA MK Ultra mind control, says in her book, uh, transformation of America that she witnessed, among others, George Bush physically shapeshift into a reptilian alien being. Now, pull up some YouTube videos of uh, 
shapeshifters. Put in, just type in shapeshifters and look at some of them and decide for yourself whether you think any of them are true or not or any of them are real. But it's interesting to see some of the videos of people that uh, are believed to uh, be uh, uh, shapeshifting and I guess uh, maybe being a part of this reptilian race. Okay, so uh, Patrick uh, Bellringer and other supporters of Nasara, they also claim that George Bush is a reptilian. Zachariah Sitchin, you probably heard about him, seen him on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, other documentaries and educational programs and such, maybe about aliens or UFOs or alien races, races or uh, you know skeletons that have been found around the planet and whatever. But his big thing has been about the Sumerian tablets. But he's an amateur uh, astrologist, claims to have translated the Sumerian tablets, referring to an alien race which created a race of humans to work as slaves in their mines in Africa. The race is called the Anunnaki. So Zachariah Stitchin, he's wrote a lot of books, so you can find his books. You can read his books as well. Uh, the Anunnaki was comprised of 23 gods and the Sumerian pantheon included Enli, the lord of agriculture, and Enki, the lord of life. The word sir, like I said, it may, apparently meant the great serpent. And so, uh, the uh, um, Sakurai Sitchin, he's in a league with the reptilians as a disinformation agent, right? So she, this uh, Kathy O'Brien, you know, she claims to have seen him with other shape-shifting reptilians at many high-level functions attended by the world's elite. Uh, Lawrence Gardner, a historian and holder of many other titles, uh, claims that a dragon bloodline, a holy grail, was created in ancient Samaria when reptilian aliens called Anunnaki descended upon the region and created a royal bloodline through genetic engineering. Stuart Swerdlow, he's another good researcher. Check him out. He's a self-professed Mentalist claims to pro possess extensive knowledge of alien intervention in Earth human society and describes in detail the activities of a reptilian race called the Draco, originating in the Draco star system. He mentions a more benevolent reptilian race called the Abenaki, which he says created the black race in Africa. He talks about the uh, ancient Sumerian tablets, the histories of the indigenous peoples of Africa, such as the Zulu, as well as physical evidence such as ancient mines which have been discovered by the Anglo-American company dating to 60,000 years B.C. Uh, popular writings about reptilian reminoids, I mean uh, reptilian humanoids, have been uh, Philip Dick, a science fiction writer, wrote about contact with three-eyed amphibious beings from Sirius and their connection to the Soviets and the Illuminati. Timothy Leary claimed to have contact with three eyed beings from Sirius. Um, so there's many conspiracy theories centered around or at least involving extraterrestrials of reptilian lineage. Many of these post that the so called greys are in fact reptiles and should be categorized as reptoids. David Icke claims, based on his exploration of genealogical connections to European royalty, that many presidents of the United States have been reptilian humanoids. In his view, the United States foreign policy after September 11th is the product of a reptilian conspiracy to enslave humanity with George W. Bush as its key player. And so look up the Bush family conspiracy theories. And uh, uh, George Baby Bush, his dad, his granddad, his granddad's ties to Hitler. Uh, some have also claimed the reptoids are capable of shape shifting. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, topic and podcast, and I hope you comment and share. And you all have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. And until next time, take care. Bye for now, Keith.